On January 21st, 1999, Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo 64 was released. This was the beginning of one of the most popular Nintendo franchises because of several reasons. It was amazing seeing all these diverse characters fighting for the first time. It was a very fun game but also competitive and everyone fell in love with that. And the series grew with Mali, Brawl, Wii U and 3DS and finally Ultimate and it eventually became the best selling fighting game ever. I'm totally in love with the series and about one year from now, on uh, January the 21st of uh, 2024, it will be the series 25 year anniversary. I don't think that Nintendo will do something in particular for this occasion since they don't really care about the anniversaries of the Smash series. So I'm here to present you the collection that Nintendo probably won't give us and today we'll make it. It's called the Super Smash Bros. Collection an imaginary game including remastered versions of the first three Super Smash Bros. games. Since many people didn't really understand the purpose of my video about Super Mario 3D All-Stars, this is little more than a concept. We are gonna make it playable just as an additional challenge, but it's meant to be seen as an imaginary game. I know that the Switch right now isn't capable of running 4K games, but the new Nintendo console of the future will probably be able to run it. And also we aren't making a game for the Switch. Now let's talk Talk about how the collection will work. All the games will run in 4K 60 frames per second in a 16x9 aspect ratio and our collection will have its own menu from which you can select one of the games. As with Super Mario 3D All-Stars we are gonna use the Dolphin emulator that can run Nintendo 64 games with virtual console support. Anyways we have done everything, now let's begin. It's time for the first game. Super Smash Bros. 64, released in 1999 in Japan, Europe and America. It was truly revolutionary at the time, and we can say that Masahiro Sakurai, the main developer, truly succeeded in making a fighting game that is easy to learn, hard to master. Uh, running the game, we can see that it has the same issues as every Nintendo 64 game, a very low resolution and outdated textures. We can fix most of that with codes by making the game run in a native 16x9 aspect ratio, but this time there are still some problems. The game for some reason has these black borders that I have no idea how to remove with Dolphin Emulator. If someone knows, please tell me, but for now I'll just remove them with editing. Then, on the character select menu, the characters at the bottom are all shifted towards the center. I have no idea how to fix this and we'll just pretend that uh, we don't see it. However, in battle they work fine, so don't worry. We can uh, crank the resolution all the way up to 1080p and the game already looks way better, but we can go even further beyond. We can apply 4K texture packs, like this one by Pytschi and Bad Randolphs that was ported to the Dolphin emulator by Admentius with the ghostly dark self. Now the game looks way better, the stages, the menu and everything, but uh, there are some problems, which are the character renders on the character select screen and the stock icons. They look good, but I don't really like how they fit with the rest of the game. This wasn't Mario's design in 1999. It was this one. This wasn't Yoshi's design, this wasn't Pikachu's design, this wasn't Link's design. Since on my last video many people pointed out that I didn't really do almost anything, I said to myself, fine, I'll do it myself. So, with the help of artificial intelligence and Photoshop, I decided to remake all of the character select screen renders. By using various AI upscaling software, you can find them with uh, just a simple Google search, I dropped all of the original character portraits and while some of them came out looking pretty good, some of them, like Mario, really didn't look that good. So I fixed them with Photoshop, then I fixed the colors of all of them by making them a bit more saturated, then I added the text, compiled them into the texture pack and I know that I'm gonna get a lot of it after this, but this is how they looked before and this is how they look now. Come on, they don't look that bad. Okay, they could be better, so you can find these renders in the description with the text or without the text, so that you can maybe fix them to your liking. I'll also leave a link to the updated texture pack with these renders. The other issue was with the stock icons, but I found this pack of icons made by GBC Ace that is formally, but actually the design of the characters really look like the ones from Super Smash Bros. 64. But there still are some problems, the colors aren't exactly identical, so I fixed them and now the texture pack is done. 
Now we crank the resolution all the way up to 4K and we are left with... Now it's time for the next game, which is probably the most important one for many. Super Smash, Super Smash Bros. Melee released in 2001 for the Nintendo GameCube. Even though it was released just two years after Super Smash Bros. 64, it had so many improvements. It featured a lot more characters, it introduced a lot of new series, new stages, everything looks way better now, the models, the textures, everything is better. Now the fighting system was perfected and nowadays it's still considered by many the best Super Smash Bros. game because of its frenetic and competitive gameplay. The game has a low resolution and a 4x3 aspect ratio, so we can run the game in a native 16x9 aspect ratio just by using some codes, then we can increase the resolution to 1080p, but for this game I think that we could really use some gameplay improvements. With codes, now we have extended name entry, we can choose whether to enable or disable the tap jump with each name, the settings are defaulted to 4 stocks and 8 minutes of time, like in competitive matches, and last, but not least, we can use the C-Stick in single player modes. To top it off, we can use texture packs. The texture pack I used is this one, published by David V. Kimball but made by a lot of people, they are all credited in the post and in the picture, please check their work, and it's truly a work of art, they completely remade every asset of the game in an HD resolution and it's incredibly close to the original one, I would say it's completely identical. But this isn't upscaling with an AI, they completely recreated all of the images. That's incredible. However, I know that this was a design choice, but there is something that I will fix. The stock icons are still the original ones, and while I like the pixel art, I think that we could go with a more modern approach like we did in Super Smash Bros. 64. I found these two texture packs, one made by Biran, and the other one that unfortunately isn't credited. After applying the textures, we cranked the resolution all the way up to 4K and we are left with... Okay, you can tell me that this isn't great. Now it's time to talk about the next and final game. Super Smash Bros. Brawl, released in 2008 in Japan, North America and Europe. It was my first Smash game and it was really important for the series despite what many people might think. Yes, it wasn't really competitive because it was for the Wii and the Wii was a console made for people that weren't really hardcore gamers, so the whole uh, fighting system was uh, greatly slowed down. It had a ton of single player content, it looked really modern and cool and most importantly it added third party characters, Solid Snake and the one that everyone was waiting for, Sonic the Hedgehog. And now for the first time people will be able to see Sonic and Mario fight in the same game. Also, it sold really well, becoming the 8th most sold Wii game ever. The game already runs in a 16x9 aspect ratio and already looks good, so we can't really do that much right now. We can crank the resolution all the way up to 1080p and, since we are already there, to 4K, and we can apply the texture packs. The texture pack I used is this, uploaded by the Ami Chubby, but also in this case a lot of people have worked on this one. Uh, make sure to check them out, they are all credited in the post that I linked in the description. And it's an HD texture pack made for both Brawl and Project M, for you competitive gamers. To make the game even better, we can remove the limits for the Masterpieces games, they all work really well in the Dolphin Emulator. Yes, the NES and SNES games are squashed for the 16x9 aspect ratio, but by tweaking the preferences you can fix it. And now we are left with...
The HD texture packs and the improved resolution really make the game stand out with this more cinematic look. We can't really do that much else with this game, but we can easily imagine that with our master version made by Nintendo, we will also be able to see native HD versions of the subspace emissary cutscenes. Now that we are done with the games, we have to work on the main menu. To make it, we can use the Pegasus frontend, just like the other time, make sure to check it out in the description. Using a modified version of the Prospero OS theme, which will be also linked in the description, we get this nice custom menu, from which we are able to launch one of the three games. After all of that, I'm calling this project a success. This is a very nice way of replaying three great games, and it's something that I would love to see made by Nintendo in the near future. I hope you liked this video, if you did, please leave a like and maybe subscribe, maybe leave a comment and I'll see you next time.